Hey guys, welcome back to the Homestead Adventure. In today's episode, I am going to show you how to can bone broth. So whatever bone broth you are canning, it's going to be canned the same way. It needs to be pressure canned. Um, it cannot safely be water bath canned. So we are using a pressure canner today. Make sure that you read your own pressure canner's manual because yours may be different than mine. So I use the Presto pressure canner and for mine to work properly, it needs three quarts of warm water. And in this recipe, we are doing quarts. You can use pints if you want. So for pint sized jars, you are going to go 20 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. And for quart sized jars, it'll be 25 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. So what that means is we've got our pressure regulator here. So no rings is five pounds of pressure. One ring is 10 pounds of pressure and two rings is 15 pounds of pressure. So we are going with one ring because we need 10 pounds of pressure. And let me show you what my pot looks like. So this is my stock pot here. Like I said, I put three quarts of warm water. No matter how many jars, no matter what size, mine always needs three quarts of warm water in order to work properly. So we've got our three quarts in here and I've got my lid here that has a rubber ring around it so that it will seal and that's how we get it to a pressure. And then I've got my little pressure regulator. So before we get started, you're going to need to sterilize your jars. I do that by washing my jars with soap and water and I put them in a 200 degree oven for 20 minutes and that will sanitize them. So you're always going to need to sanitize your jars. So that's the first step. Then we are getting our pressure canner ready by putting the proper amount of water in. Again, look at your manual, see if it needs a different amount of water. Mine is three quarts. And I've got my broth simmering on the stove. So if you watched last week's episode, I showed you how to make rabbit broth, rabbit or chicken broth, it's the same. At the end of the video, I showed you the last step when we took the cans out of the fridge and skimmed the fat off the top. So this is the very next step after we did that. I poured all of the broth into a stock pot. So I poured all of that broth into the stock pot and now I'm bringing it to a boil while my jars are in the oven. So I'll walk you through that again. So after I skim the fat off the top of the jars, I put them in my stock pot. I am sterilizing my jars at the moment and I'm getting my pressure canner ready with the three quarts of water. So my jars are almost done and my broth is almost to a boil. Now I'm going to add one to two tablespoons of vinegar into my pressure canner and that's going to just help keep the jars clean and not get that uh, cloudy, water stains on the outside. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of vinegar in here. And I'm gonna start to get this ready. So I am going to turn it on medium high right now just to warm up this water in here. So now my jars are ready to take out of the oven. So we are gonna get those and set them on a towel on the counter. We don't wanna set hot jars right on the counter cause that's gonna ruin your countertops. So we're just gonna set these jars up here. And our broth is almost to a boil, so we are ready to put the broth into the jars. So I keep my jars in the oven until I'm ready to fill them because you never want to pour your hot liquid into cold jars because that can crack your jars. So your jars are going to be hot and we're going to start ladling this hot broth into our jars and I'm using a funnel to do this and we are going to leave one inch headspace. So what that means is we're going to leave about one inch of space on the top of the jar and I'm going to show you that. And the headspace is very important when you're canning because if you don't have the proper amount of headspace, it may not seal properly and or it may not store properly. So 
We're gonna do one inch on these. So this is what your one inch headspace should look like. Um, this one is not completely full, so I am not going to can this one. This one I'll just use up and I'll put that in the fridge. So our next step is to wipe the rims on these jars. So I'm gonna take a slightly damp washcloth and I'm going to wipe the rims off. And that just gets any of the broth off that may be spilled on the sides. And that'll ensure that they are going to seal. So our next step is to put our lids on. So these lids here, all of these lids are single use only. So you're not going to reuse lids that you used in the past. You have to have new lids. Your rims, however, these can be reused time after time. If you're lost, you can look. Sorry. Okay. And then we are going to place our lids on. In the past, you had to keep your lids hot in some water, in some simmering water, and you don't have to do that anymore. So just make sure that you wash them and they are good to go. And they are new lids. So now we're going to screw on our bands just a fingertip tight, which means as soon as you feel resistance. All right, so now our jars are ready to go in the canner. So I have this jar lifter. This really helps because your jars are going to be really hot now. So I'm going to lift my jar and put it right in there. And remember our water is heating up. You don't want to put these in cold water. All right, so our jars are all in here. And we're going to take the lid, make sure that your rubber ring is around it and align it in the proper spot. And we are going to seal this up. Sit on. Okay. All right, so now that is sealed and I'm going to turn this on to high. And we are going to wait until a steady flow of steam starts coming out the top. And we're going to exhaust that steam for 10 minutes before we put the pressure regulator on. And I will show you what that looks like. So now as you can see, we've got a steady flow of steam coming out the top. And now we're gonna set our timer for 10 minutes and exhaust that steam. Remember to check your own user manual and see if your instructions are the same as mine. All right guys, I'm about to throw this microphone in the garbage. This seems to happen with every one of my videos. I don't know why, sorry about that. So what I'm saying here is after you have exhausted the steam for 10 minutes, then you're going to put your pressure regulator on. And again, we are using 10 pounds of pressure and we are going to wait until the pressure regulator starts rocking back and forth in a steady motion. And that is when we are going to put the timer on for 25 minutes for our quart sized jars. If you are doing pint sized jars, it is going to be 20 minutes. So we're going to set our timer for 25 minutes and just let that go. If the pressure regulator starts going out of control and rocking back and forth too much, you can turn your heat down just a little bit just to maintain a steady rocking motion. Now it has been 25 minutes and it's time to turn off our burner. And we are going to lift up the canner and put it aside. So you're not going to um, drag it across. That's going to harm your stove. You're going to lift it and just move it. Now we're going to leave it undisturbed until this vent cover pops down. And let me show you what that looks like. So this right here is the vent cover. When that pops down, then we take the pressure regulator off. So we're not going to touch that until this pops down. Otherwise, that's gonna cause a problem with your jar sealing. So do not touch your pressure regulator until the vent cover pops down. So now our vent cover has dropped and we're going to remove the pressure regulator and let that rest for 10 more minutes before we take the top off. So now the pressure regulator has been off the top for 10 minutes 
And now it's time to take these jars out. So we are going to carefully unscrew the lid and take it off. Careful not to burn yourself. Now we're gonna lift these jars out with our jar lifter. Definitely you wanna invest in one of these. So we're gonna take it out and we're gonna move it to a towel on the counter. Do not put these directly on your counter or they will ruin your countertops. They are very hot. And you're gonna start to hear these jars pop and that means that, or the lids will pop. And that means that it is sealed. So now all the jars are on our towel over here. So now we are going to leave these jars on this towel for at least 12 hours or just overnight. And then we are going to unscrew the bands. You don't need to store them with the bands on. And you're gonna to check to see that all of your jars are sealed. So we're gonna leave these overnight. And what we are checking for in the morning is that all of our jars have sealed. So this one right here is already sealed. You can see that little thing in the middle has popped down. And then this is one that hasn't sealed. It's kind of hard to tell on video, but um, in the middle, there's this little thing that's still poking up. And you're gonna start to hear your jars kind of pop, and that means that they've sealed. So this one's down, all the other ones are still up. So in the morning, I am going to check that all of my jars have sealed. I'm going to unscrew the bands. You can store them with the bands on, but I like to store them with the bands off. Um, don't take the lid off, obviously, just the bands. And I'm just gonna store them in my basement. That's where I store all of my canned goods. They can store at room temperature for years. So that is pretty much it. I'm gonna wipe them off with a damp cloth tomorrow. Tonight, I am going to leave them undisturbed. I'm not gonna to touch them for at least 12 hours. And that's it. You have just learned how to can your bone broth. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on the next adventure. Bye guys.